Thank you. So welcome all to this particular webinar. So today's webinar is weather and air quality modeling and introduction to WRF and WRF chem. So WRF is a weather research forecasting model. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation for this particular webinar and attending this webinar on WRF. So for this webinar, today we have Dr. K. Ramakrishna sir with us to deliver the talk on WRF model and WRF chem, which is a couple model. So uh, he is a postdoctoral fellow uh, now at King Abdullah University of Science and Technology, which is obviously a renowned uh, university and it is also known as a KU, a KUST and basically his graduation is in physics from Andhra University. Then he has pursued his MSc in metrology from Andhra University and his PhD is in atmospheric sciences from Indian Institute of Tropical Metrology and now he's doing a postdoctoral study. His scientific career. So he was a research fellow at SDSC Shar from Feb to November 2012. Then he joined I IITM Pune as a research fellow from November 2012 to April 2019. He has a huge experience in atmospheric science. And then after April 2019 to till date, he is at KAUST as a postdoctoral fellow. His model, modeling experiences are in assimilation of various conventional and non-conventional data sets using creed point statistical interpolation technique, which is also known as GSI 3D bar in a WRF model. And also he has experience in uh, WRF chem for the prediction of chemical species at sub-regional scales over the Indian region, preparation of emission inventories over a particular region, which plays a crucial role for the estimation chemical species using WRF chem simulations. And uh, his uh, technical skills, or we can say his expertise in models like WRF, then high split, WRF chem, OPAC, SB diet. Okay. So thank you so much, sir, for accepting our invitation and delivering this talk on uh, WRF and WRF chem. So basically today we are just giving the overview or the introduction to these particular models. We are not going in the uh, very advanced level of WRF and WRF chem because uh, in India, very few people are working in this particular modeling. So I can see the institutes like IITM or IIT, IIT Rudki, IIT Bombay, uh, even IIT Gandhinagar. Now these people are working on WRF assimilations model. So thank you so much, sir. And a uh, little bit of Housekeeping yeah. before we start this particular session to all the participants, please, if you have any question, you can ask you a question after the session. So we have 10 minutes for Q&A uh, or you can type your question in a chat box. So I will assist that particular question at the end of this particular webinar. Now the session is yours, sir. Thank you so much, Dr. Ramakrishna Karamuri. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vikram. Uh, thank you for inviting this lecture. Uh, may all of you know uh, that the weather and atmosphere is a different complex system and it contains a different aerosols, different atmospheric particles, and it based upon the temperature and pressure, mainly depends upon the temperature and pressure. So uh, to understand the weather system is itself a complex system and it varies from the regions to region like a tropics to extra, extra tropics and mid latitudes and uh, uh, the polar regions the atmosphere is varies and we need to understand the weather and uh, we need to simulate. Uh, so first you need to understand the weather by using the primitive equations in the, in the form of mathematics. Then we can able to simulate the future. Uh, first we need to understand the, uh, what is the past, what, what we experienced, what we experienced. Then we can uh, forecast the future by using different models. So when using the WRF is a simple uh, atmospheric model, it doesn't contain any chemi chemistry, but in the real atmosphere, there are the chemical components present in the atmosphere. So uh, the coupled system is a more advanced of the uh, atmospheric model. Uh, as the Nigam said, 
the WRF model. Just I, here I'm going to explain you mainly what is the WRF and what is the WRF chem and how it able to run and what is the required inputs for the WRF chemistry or WRF model. Um, in the w, WRF stands for, as he said, WRF stands for the weather research and forecasting model. Basically, it's used for the mainly operational, uh, mainly operational forecasting and both the research as well as the operational forecasting. In the operational forecasting, it simulates the now casting very accurately and short range weather forecasting. As you all know, the cyclones and thunderstorms, they are predicting IMD and other institutes, they are predicting and they are giving to the local public uh, with an accurate uh, prediction. Uh, by using the WR systems only. Uh, they able to simulate the now casting, short range weather forecasting, as well as the seasonal, subseasonal scales of the they are doing actually, and it supports. And uh, it's mainly developed by the NCAR and NOVA people, NCEP, and with collaboration of some other institutes actually. But WRF is coupled with so many other systems, which are like a WRF solar, WRF hydro, WRF greenhouse gases, and the hurricane wharf. Uh, so one of the main component is the WRF chemistry, which is coupled with the chemistry component is coupled with the WRF component, and it will able to simulate the transportation of transportation and transformation of the trace gases and aerosols present in the atmosphere, and it is very useful to simulate um, the aerosol component and the uh, the gases how it will react. Uh, the atmospheric gases which are released by the industries or road transport, some other sectors uh, which are coming to the atmosphere, which are giving the man-made the emissions, which are affecting the atmosphere and the atmosphere is affecting to the chemical. It is a two-way interaction between the chemistry and the atmosphere. So which we are going to attempt to simulate that is by using the WRF chemistry. And finally, it is how it is affecting to the human health. So uh, the basic WRF flowchart, maybe uh, some, some of the people have an aware of the WRF system and some people doesn't have an aware of the WRF system. But basic WRF system has three components. One is the WRF pre-processing uh, uh, pre system, one is the WRF model, and the WRF post-processing system. In the pre-processing system, we need to create the inputs for the w, WRF that we are taking from the uh, some other terrestrial data. So first we need to define uh, what is the terrestrial data. So whether it is a hill region or a mountain re uh, hill region or a sea region or it is a flat region. So we need to define the region means topography. Uh, like it is a vegetation region or the desert region. So we need to define the terrestrial data. After that we need to give the initial conditions from the global model. So basically the WARF is a regional model. So we need to provide the initial and boundary conditions. So first we need to give a starting point where the model has to start and how the atmosphere behavior is. Uh, so that is the initial and boundary conditions we are taking from the some other global model that is called that is from the NSF GFS and right now here ECMWF. Uh, so many the other agencies they are providing the initial conditions. Right now India is also producing um, the initial and boundary conditions. After that these we need to prepare our domain and the initial conditions for the, our model then we need to pass this information to the wrf flow where it will time integrate the model and how long you want to simulate if you want to simulate for a week or for a month or for a year it will simulate after that you need to post process the output to visualize so what it is coming uh, whether it is coming exactly right or not so you want to see the output by using different post processing tools there are the such as Vapor and CL, uh, AW Post, RIP and WPP and UPP, uh, you call it as UPP and uh, MET, there are the some other. Then what is the main differences between the WRF and WRF chemistry? This is the WRF chemistry flowchart, uh, the same as the WRF, but there are the some other additional inputs are available, is required for the WRF chemistry, which are from which are nothing but the emissions from the atmosphere, emissions from the our industries, road transport, uh, such as ex additional emissions, as well as the natural emissions from the biogenic emissions. Uh, natural emissions like a sea, sea spray and the natural dust, biogenic emissions, as well as those are the natural emissions. And this is the anthropogenic emission. And uh, the fire emissions from the forest fires, uh, those emission data. As well as we need to give the, uh, as we give the atmospheric initial conditions, we also need to give the chemical initial conditions to the model. Then it will simulate how it will progress.
Mainly, it is used for the atmospheric physics and parameterization, as well as the case study research and forecasting purpose. The simulation main uh, simulation is nothing but the um, you you have an observations so you need to you need to incorporate your observations to the time integration of the model then it will called as a data simulation and um, uh, and the teaching of the purpose you need to simulate uh, the coupled climate uh, coupled chemistry applications as well as the regional climate applications you need to do it for the seasonal scale and sub seasonal scale as well as as well as the the warf is only is not only a regional model as you can do it for the global simulations as well as mainly the wrf has three components as i said earlier that is the wrf pre processing system and the wrf model as well as the uh, post processing tool but there are another two components what it is for the wrf chemistry that is the additional component for the chemical uh, chemistry that is the emission preparations um, as well as the wrf da this is an optional part if you want you can do it but you, if you do it that will be more accurate the observations we need to incorporate into the model time integration that in it will calculate the accurate predictions that's called wrf data simulation in the wrf pre processing system there are the three executables are there geogrid.exe ungrip.exe and metagrid.exe in the wrf model there are two executables and main executables one is the real.exe and wrf.exe if you are doing the ideal simulations uh that is called ideal.exe when the wrf chemistry uh we need to it is wrf chemistry is the preparation of the emission preparations emission preparations of the anthropogenic biogenic fire emissions and the chemical in initial boundary condition these all i'm going to explain de detail in the coming slides first of all what is the wps and how you need to prepare the in um, the domain and all here additional uh, in it, uh, in that we have three components again one is the geogrid and one is the ungrip one is the metgrid in the geogrid first we need to define the domain uh, what should be the domain it should be indian domain it should be another domain so you need to give the latitude longitude from where to where you know you, you want to simulate it and what type of terrestrial data terrestrial data kind of the land use data uh, vegetation fraction those things we need to define it and how many grid points and what is the what kind of resolution you want if you want to simulate with a 10 km resolution means uh, if you want to simulate uh, see consider the globe has a n number of grid points and uh, how you want to simulate it you want to simulate it for the uh, whole india or whole globe or a whole asian region if you want to simulate for the monsoon for example if you want to simulate for the monsoon you have to consider the whole asian domain which the winds are coming from the southern asia uh, southern part of the southern part of the india and uh, then it moves so you need to see the progression of the monsoon so you need to consider the asian domain like that first you need to define the domain based upon your area of interest and you can fix as a nested domains as well as nested domains in that uh, that uh, the it will the terrestrial data will interpolate to your domain like a terrestrial um, and the time varying meteorological fields are are interpolated to the model domain by metgrid actually in the ungrip we need uh, we are getting a data from the global models which are uh, which are the initial and boundary conditions, atmospheric initial and boundary conditions, as I said earlier. Uh, those, it will un ungrip is nothing but just unpack it. Uh, the geogrid will fix the domain, the ungrip will unpack the data, and both will interpolate it in the metagrid level, and then there it passes to the real um, the time integration part. I'll explain to you. In the interpolation of the static fields, mainly the topography height, land use category, soil type, annual mean soil temperature, uh, monthly vegetation fraction, monthly soil surface albedo, these parameters where, see, if you see the WF grid is a uh, some rectangular grid with a grid points, but where the uh, real atmospheric, like a global data is available in this projection, so it will interpolate the data, these grid points. So the warp is mainly calculated the all the computations has been done in the grid in the corners of the grid points in the grid points only but it will as well as simulate in this based upon the grid points it will interpolate the what is the real atmosphere inside the grid as well as 
So this is one of the tool uh, which some of the people use and some people do it manually actually. Uh, it will, uh, this tool helpful to create our model domain. If you want to simulate the US domain, uh, this is an Australian domain. So if you want to simulate the Australian domain, just you, it will uh, create, you have to mention here what type of grid points are required. Uh, how many grid points are required and where the latitude and where the latitude starts and where the latitude ends where the longitude starts and where the longitude ends and what type of resolution you want so if you give such kind of information it will create a domain for you and uh, it will give the name list as well as the main component the main component to create the domain is a little toughest task actually so those, uh, it, uh, there are some tool provided by the NSEP actually. So it is easier for you to create the domain as well as based upon your requirements. And uh, the Ungrip, as I told you, the Ungrip program. The Ungrip program has a, uh, mainly the global data is available in the grip format or NetCDA format. There are the two common, uh, nowadays another uh, format is coming actually but mainly the grip and netcd formats the data is available in the grip and uh, the grip um, the global data is providing in the grip because the grip is the most compressed version uh, so which is e tra easily transfer the larger data sets into the smaller with the smaller size actually so yeah, that's why they mostly preferred with the grip data so the grip data you need to ungrip it just unpack the data and extract the metallurgical fields using the v tables the um, the wps there are the variable tables are there we need to mention what variables we need to extract from the data so we are extracting the data from the v tables and uh, and the metagrid program the third program it will interpolate the data from the metagrid uh, from the geogrid data we demand uh, we define the domain as well as the metallurgical data we extracted from the ungrip so both will combine and uh, uh, finally you will get the each and every grid point the data so the met grid program will execute like that so this is the name list so name list is nothing but uh, where you want to define your the where you want to define your grids and how to run so but for understanding the model we need to tell um where your simulation starts St starting date so on so date to so on so date and uh, the ending date but uh, if you want to simulate for that two domains two domains means if you can give the outer domain is a big bigger domain and if you want if your area interest if your area interest only nasik just i'm telling if your area interest is no nasik for simulate the thunderstorm but better to take it the bigger domain like a uh, um, central India and uh, concentrate on the Nasik, then whatever the additional con additional uh, data is coming from the outside, so we can understand actually, as well as uh, the higher resolution data. Uh, as you are going for the nesting, nesting means the domain inside, you will keep it another domain that is called nesting actually. If you go for the nesting, uh, the resolution will be higher actually. So here we are giving for the one is to three ratio. Uh, here we are considering two domains. One is the first domain start. Uh, the first column stands for the first domain. Second column stands for the second domain. And the first column, the starting date and ending date and interval seconds we are giving. Interval seconds means how much interval data you are giving in the seconds. So it is six hourly data we are giving. Uh, even if you have right now, the ECMWF is providing every hourly data as well as and number of grid points, how many number of grid points you are taking actually. Uh, the number of grid points you are mentioning here, the 74 grid points in the east-west direction means uh, in the east-west direction and SN is the north-south direction. We are giving 61 grid points for the first domain. As well as second domain, we are giving the 112 grid points and 97. And the geographical data, which we are giving in the 10 meters and 2 meters, the high resolution data right now, 30 arc seconds data is available actually. And we need to define the resolution. Uh, it is in meters. The dx and dy are the x direction. It means um, the north south, north south and east west directions. Um, what kind of resolution you are giving? So he, here we are giving in the meters. That is a thirty thousand meters. Nothing but thirty kilometers. We are giving uh, how um, how 
30 kilometer resolution you are predicting right now you the wharf is able to capable to simulate up to 50 meters 50 meter each grid point we can able to simulate but that is a computationally expensive it requires a lot of computational power and the map projections we need to give the which kind of projection we are giving generally for the mid latitudes or uh, mid latitudes we give for the lambert projections and the tropical regions we give the met mercator Mer Mer projections and we need to define the center lat longs uh, that is the called reference where it is starting and the reflect la reference lat long and uh, reference lat and reference long is nothing but the center of the domain latitude and longitude from the center it will calculate uh, uh, the number of grid points which we are giving here and the output data format that the ungrip and the met grid we will do here and uh, coming to the this is the pre-processing system which i explained you till now is the pre-processing the pre-processing um, will will compile the data will compile the global data to your model grid then we do the time integration by using our physics and our uh, our physics atmospheric physics components then wrf executables which where they are located and mainly the wrf v3 folder uh, they have a four executables mainly n.exe tc.exe real.exe and warp.exe whereas the mostly used uh, we use the only two um, uh, two executables that is the real.exe and warp.exe earlier they are using the endon.exe and ts.exe but uh, real.exe is simulate it will create the initial and boundary conditions for the your model domain where wf.exe will execute the time integration part and finally you will get it in the output so the wf uh, for the real cases requires the additional inputs from the WPS package. So whatever you created the WPS uh, uh, in the WPS, WR pre-processing package, those data we need to link to the our WR directory and we need to run the here. Here also there is a name list where you define your starting date, ending date and what kind of physics you want to use it. So this is the name list actually, this is the part of the name list. In the part of the name list, we are telling about the time control, uh, we are telling the time control um, how many hours you want to run. If you want to run it for a day, it is 24 hours with minutes and seconds. You need to define the starting date, ending date, and uh, how much interval of seconds you are giving the data and you are expecting the data uh, and how much you want to run, write the output. Uh, here it is in minutes actually. Uh, you want to write it for 180 minutes, means every three hours. So if you want to write it one minute also, you can write it the data and how many frames per out file see if you writing for three hourly like that three hourly is a one time step so it will it will write the thousand files like that a thousand time step into one file if you want to write one file to one time step that we can write it and uh, in due to the computation in uh, the if the model will blow up or it will stop due to some uh, uh, power fluctuations or the computational issues or the any some other issues so we can restart our model so we need to define the restart time period before that. So it will create a restart time every 360 minutes. See if you are, uh, how much, if you, if, if I want to write it for a day, I can write it. If I, if I want to restart file for a minute, we can write it. And um, there's the time control. And we also give, there are the different type of um, input and output options. The IO nothing but input and output options. Input and output options are the, uh, the binary data whether you want to write the output or we, we need to take the input as a binary format or net cdf format or uh, parallel nets parallel hdf format grip one grip two or parallel net cdf uh, parallel net cdf and uh, all it has own um, own importance mainly we are writing in the net cdf format or parallel net cdf because it's a uh, mostly used uh, or we can write it a grip data which is which is a more compressed version more compressed version these are the general formats we are using and the domain in the time step domain uh, how much time integration you want to run the model uh, your model will start now but you, you want to calculate at each and every time so each and every minute or each and every hour so the time integration also we need to take it how it will uh, integrate the model the model will uh, integrate 
basically in the irw it will take six times of our domain size if a domain size is 30 kilometers so it be, it should be 180 if your domain if your domain size is 10 kilometers it should be maximum 60 60 seconds it should be maximum 60 seconds and you can uh, run it below as well as in the time fraction and the maximum domains you need to fix it here and the latitude longitude and the number of vertical levels number of vertical levels uh, we need to define uh, from the bottom of the atmosphere bottom of the atmosphere to the top of the atmosphere how many levels should be resolved you need to resolve and uh, what is the metagrid soil levels from the surface to the soil levels, how many soil levels you have the data? Generally, we have the four levels of data is providing from the N sub GFS as well as the ESMWF. Uh, if you are defining the uh, vertical levels and uh, you can define, uh, I want more levels at the bottom of the atmosphere or I want more levels at the top of the atmosphere based upon our interest. We need to define our levels from zero to one uh that will calculate and the p top requested is the pressure level at the top of the top of the model so it will simulate up to the 50 hectopascal is is almost like a 50 kilometers from the uh from the surface and uh, we need to define the physics with the microphysics it will simulate the uh ice cube and uh, these particles the radiation physics how the solar radiation long wave and uh, long, short wave and long wave is affecting uh, and it interact with the different uh, uh, as well as the time step we are giving surface uh, surface clay physics and the surface physics and the boundary layer physics and the, um, how, what is the time step you want to call these boundary layer physics or cumulus physics how it is affecting see uh, if the radiation physics is called at 30 every 30 minutes so every th uh, every 30 seconds so the radiation physics is called at every 30 seconds and the boundary layer uh, if you keep it zero so it will call every time step of the time integration of the model the cumulus physics so these numbers are defined in the name list actually uh, these corresponding numbers we need to see in the user guide and keep it if the number three represents uh, some physics number and the radiation one it, it represents some radiation scheme so you need to call that radiation scheme by this number so these are the options and uh, coming to the wr chemistry so these are the inputs uh, from these inputs we need to post process we need to post process the data by using the arw post and these things for that we need to uh in in addition to the w up to that up to now we are looking at the wrf part and we are going to explain the wrf chemistry and the wrf chemistry what type of emissions are there and how where we get the emissions and how we are preparing those emissions and the anthropo uh, there are the different type of emissions one is the anthropogenic emissions biogenic emissions fire emissions and the chemical boundary conditions those we are readily available from the uh wrf chemistry website uh, the anthropogenic chemistry data is provided by the Edgar Hestep right now, it is, which is freely available and the global data with a high resolution is available. Uh, the Edgar Hestep with a point degree monthly data is available, uh, which is more than sufficient for the um, for the studies actually. Uh, the Edgar version 6.1, which is the latest version of, from the two, uh, 2008, it is provided the emissions, not only the greenhouse gases, but the sector it is providing the sector wise contribution like a road transport sector industrial sector uh, industrial sector a sector transportation sector uh, aviation yeah they are providing the sector wise and we uh, we met all the data all the sectors and we'll prepare the emission for the total uh, it will provide the emissions from the emissions for the ozone precursors gases carbon monoxide nox non methyl organic compounds methane and the uh, uh, NOx, NOx sulfur dioxide and as well as the primary particulate matters like a fine particulate matter PM10 and 2.5 carbonaceous species like PAVC and OC. So this is the website where you'll get the data uh, to prepare the emissions. Edgar Hestep and uh, this is the data set which is available and uh, this is the executable to create the uh, emissions for the WRF inputs. And there are some other data sets which are global and regional emission and are available here, and that is called ICAD. 
uh, we are giving the WRF chemistry input uh, with the with the auxiliary auxiliary input five the name of auxiliary input five uh, through W uh, WRF chemistry the name of WRF chemistry through the auxiliary input five. Uh, as I said earlier, the auxiliary input five with the with an option two is net CDF. We are giving it as the net CDF data. And coming to the biogenic emissions, biogenic emissions in the WRF, uh, they have varied rate. Uh, there are the four options are available, but the mainly the data is available from the Megan data, which is freely available with a one kilometer resolution. In the data set, sleep area index, vegetation type, and emission factors are available. In the biogenic emissions, WRF chemistry, the biogenic emissions generally four options are available. Mm, the biogenic emissions with a with no biogenic emissions so you need not necessarily to give any input that means we are not considering the biogenic emissions in our model the anthropogenic emission is a mandatory part the anthropogenic emission is a mandatory part and here also wide wide variety of options are there but uh, we need to uh, choose the scheme which scheme you want to consider uh, there are uh, schemes which consider the ozone without considering the ozone with consider of the Aqueous aerosols without considering the aqueous aerosols. You want to simulate the clouds without simulation of the clouds. So we need to uh, choose according to that. But biogenic emissions, that is an optional part. You whether you want to give it, you are not necessarily give it. That's fine. But uh, without biogenic emissions, also we can we can run the model. Uh, and the second option is the land use based emissions from the Gunter et al. These emissions are prepared from the temperature and photosensitic activities. Uh, this will be calculated from the model itself. So we are the in this option also it is not necessary to give any additional inputs. The third option is the user specified data. There is a user specified data mainly they created for the US region because they developed these models. But uh, if we have the any user specified data, any observation data, if we have any, so we created our data set our emission inventory for the biogenic emissions and we can give it to the model. There is the fourth option, which is readily available as a best choice, the Megan data, which is the global data set is available at one kilometer resolution. And uh, this data we are giving with the name of the WRF chemi underscore domain one, or uh, how many domains you have, you can give, we can give it like that actually, with the uh, with the help of Aguilar input six. And we are giving with the net CD format as well as, and coming to the biomass, biomass burning and uh, forest fires and these things. So here, all, here they have, we have two options. One is the biomass burning option. So zero and one. Uh, zero means we are not giving any additional inputs. On the biomass burning one, we are giving the uh, emissions. So where we'll get the emissions? We'll get the emissions from the, there is a fin emission inventory, uh, which are providing for the WR, uh, the NCAR people they are providing actually, uh, by using the Mozart 4 and Spark 1999 and the Geoscheme data, they converted, uh, the MODIS data, VARS data, and all the uh, data sets they combine and they give it to their model. And we are taking that model outputs to give the uh, to give the accurate uh, biomass em burning emissions to the model, our model, with the name of the WRF fire emissions um, WRF fire chemi, uh, with the help of Aguilar input seven and the WRF chemistry. A chemical boundary conditions, initial and boundary conditions. To generate the chemical and boundary conditions, uh, uh, there are some readily pro uh, readily pro uh, available programs which I show you on the earlier website. Here, there are they give some pre-processing tools are available, which you are able to calculate the uh, or uh, update your chemical and initial boundary conditions. Again, this is an optional. If you want to update the initial and boundary conditions to the model, it will simulate. If you are not updating the initial and boundary conditions to the model, it will take it will also simulate the uh, the chemical components, but it will take some time to adjust the model. But uh, if you are giving the some initial and boundary conditions to the model, that will be more accurate. Uh, the the program called MOSBC set up the space and time varying chemical initial and boundary conditions to the global model. Uh, the global model outputs are the are readily available by Mozart for WCC and the CamCam website. Uh, CamCam model outputs, which are which are readily available from the NCAR website. Uh, in the name list, uh, we need to enable the true option. Have the boundary conditions true. If you don't have the boundary conditions, keep it false. 
then it will also simulate but it will take some time to stabilize the model to create um, whatever the creating the chemical and uh, chemical components in the model that will correct and there is a dust emission that is a natural dust emission currently there are the three options available in the wf chemistry component one is the go-kart dust scheme second one is the go-kart modified afwa dust scheme third one is the go-kart modified uoc dust scheme in the dust scheme one is a simple dust scheme but it doesn't contain the wet deposition component in the model um, but AFW scheme uh, in the UOC modified dust scheme, they they added the dust wet deposition dust wet deposition scheme in their component. Um, it is again you need to check it which scheme is working for your region if you want to simulate. Uh, as I tell earlier, the we need to view the emissions with the angular inputs. Uh, anthropogenic emissions we are taking from the angular input five. Biogenic emissions are taking from the angular input six. Surface emissions are given through the Aguilar input 7 and the go-kart dust emissions we are giving by the Aguilar input 7. If you have earlier simulation outputs, if you want to if you want to continue your earlier simulation to the next simulation, so you don't want to lose your data, then you can give your earlier simulation outputs to the present simulation of the output. There is the external chemical fields, WF data from the previous one. We can give through Aguilar uh, Aguilar input 12 and the volcanic ash emissions were Aguilar input 13, aircraft emissions 14, greenhouse gases 15. So we can give the additional, these are the any optional data sets we can give it to the model. So after successful completion of the war, so first of all, we give all these kind of data sets to the WRF model and uh, run the WRF.exe. Then you will, after successful completion of the war, uh, we are post processing the data by using different tools. They are the ARW, uh, UPP, and NCL, Python, etc. And the graphical verification tools are the GRADS, NCL, and Python. Uh, there are the, some tools, uh, some other tools which are MATLAB. You can use it, MATLAB, or uh, some other softwares to visualize the uh, whatever the outputs you are getting. And uh, there are some applications of the WAFCAM, which are from my earlier studies, satellite derived PM2.2 concentration from the WAFCAM simulations over Indian region, investigation of massive dust storm and its radiative effects over Arabian Peninsula using the WAFCAM simulation. So mainly uh, the premature mortality, uh, all the death is caused due to PM2.5 concentrations in India is looking like this. So yeah, the more, constant more deaths are occurred or the indo gangetic plain and these regions are Mumbai and uh, other regions is mainly due to the higher particulate matter concentrations. So about 78% of the total 141 cities in India are exceeds the PM 2.5 concentrations and most of the cities are critical level. Uh, we cannot uh, give a specific forecast by due to the limited spatial and the temporal resolution of the observation network. We have a very limited uh, observations are available one whatever the observations are available that i have the quality control and the instrument maintenance so many things are there so those we have a lack of data we are not giving the accurate uh, predictions so we take it the satellite data satellite data this is the annual set annual uh, uh, aerosol concentration annual aerosol concentration from the modis which is the annual aerosol concentration from the model the model i'm telling model is not perfect first of all so whatever we are giving the input whatever we are giving the input if you are giving input is right the model will give the output right if the model if your input is bad or the input observations is poor quality then the model output is also well you'll replicate as a poor so you all always uh, the model will overestimate or underestimates or will be there so the annual uh, difference between the model and satellite that the bias there's a huge bias is there to overcome this bias uh, we incorporated the satellite data satellite data this is the annual pm 2.5 concentration from the wrf which we this is the pm 2.5 concentration and this is the aerosol concentration uh, in the pm 2.5 concentration um, we updated with the satellite data so through the equation, so the annual estimated PM 2.5 concentration is more accurate uh, when compared to the uh, normal WF simulations. So this is the just for a uh, just to visualize uh, these things I am explaining to you. 
uh, there are the in the different seasons how the pm 2.5 concentration is going on the pre monsoon season there is a less pm 2.5 concentration in the monsoon season the dust is coming from the arabian gulf as well as the thar desert uh, this is the dust concentration mainly pm 2.5 will have a fine dust particles so these dust concentrations are entering into the igp region as well in the post monsoon and the winter season where the boundary layer is very low you see the very high uh, high particulate matter concentrations or igp or central india these regions um, which are which are uh, very bad for the human health um, so we need to check it this one and there is a second case study just i am uh, showing for the how the vacuum is able to simulate or capture the original um, atmosphere real atmosphere you see uh, that this the top panel is shows from the modis satellite data this is from another reanalysis product and this is from the our simulation from the vacuum simulation uh, there is a dust storm originated from the arabian gulf and it is progressing and progressing and it is moving the origin of the dust storm and how it is progressing and how it is moving it is well captured by the wrf cam as well as i'm um, i want to show what type of influence in the atmosphere due to the dust component due to the dust the atmosphere is heating yeah, i show you here the 2 meter temperature the atmosphere is heating overall heating will be around 0.1 to 2 degrees due to the dust component in the night time the heating will be very high because uh, uh, the long wave radiation is emitted by the earth will trap by the dust layer and it will heat the surface by the especially the night time so the 20 in the day time it will have very less uh, heating and the night time you have a long heating and uh, and on average it will heat the atmosphere around 2 degrees over the dust regions due to, this is due to the natural dust and uh, this is a radiative force due to the dust uh, so how much the radiation is affecting in the surface uh, short wave radiation is affecting uh, when you have a dust layer uh, when you have a dust layer in the atmosphere the short wave radiation will not come into the surface the sur short wave radiation will not entered into the surface and uh, the surface will cool the atmosphere as well as the long wave radiation will not leave the the long wave radiation from the surface will not leave to the atmosphere due to the dust layer is act as a layer so uh, the long wave radiation is more and the short wave radiation is less as in the atmosphere it is different in the atmosphere uh, is the difference between the surface and the top of the atmosphere this is the top of the atmosphere top of the atmosphere you not see the much differences because uh, uh, whatever the dust layer is mostly present in the atmosphere and it will affect the surface because the incoming radiation it will affect the incoming radiation as well as the outgoing radiation so finally the net radiation is cools cools the uh, cools the surface and warms the atmosphere uh, totally the net radiation as well as i want to show you the how much it is heating uh, as i told you earlier atmosphere is heating by 3 degrees by this is the similar plot again uh, this is shows at the 2 meter temperature and it will shows the column heating atmosphere total how much the atmosphere column is heating by the dust so thank you so much if you have any questions please let me know